Your Humanities Half Hour is brought to you by the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Welcome to Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry. Our guests today are mostly all visitors to the Marianas here to connect with us by sharing folklore dances and culture from their home country of Bulgaria. They are Sophia Six. Named after the capital city of Bulgaria, they've won numerous awards from some of the biggest dance competitions in the world. Joining us in this half of the show are Samuel Kozarov, one of the youngest members of the troupe, and a familiar voice, Francis Sablan, Auntie Francis of the Chamelinian Cultural Village, Inc. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. How do you say hello in uh, Bulgarian? In Bulgaria, we say hello. It goes like zdravey. Yes, what he said. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Samuel, how is your visit to Saipan going? Oh, Saipan is a wonderful country. It's uh, Yesterday we discussed that Saipan is a place we have always dreamed of and we have been waiting to come here for lots of years now. So, our moment is now. We are here. We are enjoying the good weather, the good organization of the festival and uh, the interaction with all the people here. We are really happy to be here, actually. Well, you have been very busy with your group. I know uh, going to uh, perform and interact with a number of groups. Tell us a little bit more about Sophia Six. Okay, Sophia Six is a folklore dance ensemble from Bulgaria. Uh, it has a, a history of uh, 47 years and throughout the years it's ha we have won more than nine uh, first place awards from world competitions. We have more than 3,000 uh, performances in, in the country in Bulgaria and more than 1,000 abroad and we are well known in our homeland. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Uh, Auntie Francis, how did this world-renowned dance troupe end up here in the Marianas? They uh, are members uh, of an 80-member strong um, group of countries under the Federation of International Dance and Arts Festival known as FIDAV. Um, one of their uh, strong uh, officers of our of that organization, um, Emil, uh, he is the one that um, basically recommended, highly recommended this group, and and you know, we are very happy that he was able to recommend them um, because they are an outstanding group all around. Well, they certainly have a lot of energy going to interact with all of the students and the groups. Now, um, Samuel, you are actually, you said, only in 12th grade. Yep. And you've been doing this for how many years? I've been doing, I've been dancing for 15 years now. So how old were you when you actually started? So I started when I was uh, three years old. My father brought me to the culture house when we are having our rehearsals and the, the dances captivated me and I could feel the energy of our songs and everything. So that's how I started. What is it you like about it that keeps you going all through your school years? The the one thing that the one the thing is that it makes me feel energized. All people, more than sixty people, are dancing with me at the same rhythm, same tempo. So this makes me feel uh, feel good, energized, and happy. Hmm. And also, most of my friends are part part of the ensemble as well. So while I'm rehearsing uh, the dances for the future performances, I'm meeting with my friends and talking about different stuff. Hmm. You mentioned um, you went your your father took you to the culture house. Yeah. where they were teaching dancing. What is a culture house in Bulgaria? In Bulgaria, there are lots of culture houses. It's it's a building with uh, halls and usually a, a library. 
and yeah that's it with a big backyard where events are hold like festivals and so on oh okay okay yeah. Um, you actually were talking about your director who is uh, not here in Saipan this time, but he has a personal family tie to Sophia Six. What is it about your director, other than being your director and your choreographer, that's so special? So our choreographer and our di the director of the ensemble is named Nikwai Nestrov. He's a great guy. But what's more important for this uh, family is that his father, Nestor Nestrov, is the first uh, person in Bulgaria to introduce the dancing class in the school program. It's something... Uh, that uh, he said for the first time and from then on every school is do it, doing it on a daily basis mm, and how when was that do you know that the school um, I'm not sure but it was really back in the days way before your time yeah, yes, yeah. yes do you see how is um, folklore dance in the community outside from your group or these special groups that perform do do Are there other people who just like perform it at festivals or in families? Is it still strong in the Bulgarian culture? Uh, actually, there was kind of a gap in the last uh, few years, but currently I can see that the interest uh, for this kind of activity is extremely increasing and there are more and more people uh, coming to dance with us and participating in such dancing festivals and events. Mm, very good. Auntie Francis, you, of course, have helped many dance troops uh, here in the Marianas. Now that you've spent time with these guys, um, what do you observe about the way they, they conduct themselves, organize themselves, rehearse, uh, that you feel is a good example uh, for our local dancers? They are very disciplined. Um, and so... Their director, who is here, uh, Nikolai. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, yes. No, but it was his father that's uh, oh, okay. still abroad. But Nikolai, I noticed that when they don't, when I ask them if they want to do certain activities, it would be wait. We need to check with our director. So there's that respect and the discipline that. No, we can't say anything, we can't do anything until our directors say so. Mm -hmm. Actually, the <laughs> discipline is the one thing that brought us to all the awards that we currently have. The discipline and the hard work as well. Mm -hmm. So what is training like for you? And yes... It's it's not that of a physical activity, but... Uh, We, while we are rehearsing, we are reaching that point, you know, that we feel uh, happy, feel at our place, uh, surrounded by friends, and yeah. In Bulgarian dance, um, what are the songs about, mostly? In Bulgaria, the, the songs uh, represent the way of living uh, in the certain region because we have nine different cultural regions so each one is different from the rest of them so each songs uh, each of the songs represent uh, a different activity for example we have song for harvest we have song for planting a tree for planting a flower uh, for holding an event we have a song for for, for different stuff actually mm -hmm. If I can add, they have a song for courtship, mm -hmm. you know, where they're uh, flirting and then eventually, you know, they, uh, there is a couple that arises from the occasion. But going back to the question that you had, and I'm sorry I, had, I was coughing, it's synchronization. They, like what um, Sammy mentioned, they're all in unison. They, when they um, step on the right step, everybody's stepping on the right step. If they step on the left step, everybody's stepping. And, and they do have a real fast pace. And so everybody's in unison. So the synchronization is something that, you know, I talk to every group that I work with that is a goal that we want everyone in unison, everyone 
swaying to the same side and, you know, and just moving together. And so that's one thing I've noticed about Sophia Six is not just their discipline, but their synchronization and their, and their unity. And like he mentioned, um, their, their commitment to not just the presentation, but to each other. They, they work to get very well as a team. And that's another um, goal that I'd like um, to have modeled mm-hmm. for all the groups that I work with. It's, it's just to be cohesive and be, work together as a team and, and know your place, you know, in, in that organization. How many hours a week do you spend um, training? We usually uh, rehearse three times a week, and each rehearsal is about three hours, which makes about nine hours a week. Do you feel... At least, at least nine hours a week. I mean, that's almost like being an athlete. Do you have strength training? I I haven't seen your dance yet, or like a a diet that you guys are supposed to follow, or... No. no, we do not have a diet, but as every other activity, uh, we start uh, with a uh, warm-up, then we practice our dances, and that's how our rehearsal goes. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say is your favorite dance that you perform, and why? No, I don't have a favorite dance. All of them are my favorite. Oh, uh, yeah. In different cultures, there are different um, things that make a dance um, well performed. For example, in some in some cultures, the women have to smile, even if all her movements are correct, but she's not smiling. That's the most important part of the dance. In Bulgarian dance, what are the qualities that make a good dance? Yeah, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there we have nine different uh, nine different uh, cultural regions and each of them has uh, different moves that make it uh, differentiate from the rest. So, for example, for the dances that we are performing now, it's from the Trace uh, region. There, uh, the clapping of the hands is really... Uh, it's special for the men to clap with, the, with <laughs> their hands, also smile. And the one thing that's common for all of them is the synchronization. Synchronization. Mm. I saw a video clip of one of your performances. It was very beautiful with the costumes and, like you said, everybody moving at the same time. And um, what are you taking away when you go home from your experience here in Saipan? What what uh, I would remember always will be the the warm greeting of all people, the friendly behavior of uh, all people that we have met here, and the the really beautiful country mm. and uh, was, uh, of course the really good organization of this festival by Francis thank you <laughs> and Gordon and the team yeah yeah the whole team <laughs> Auntie Francis any final thoughts before we let you go so we can have the other members come in one of the uh, things I've learned this morning was um, or at least last night we were discussing um, what costumes they were going to wear, what dance they were going to perform today at the two different schools. And I made the comment like, oh, well, why don't you just wear one costume and perform the different dances? And the quick response was no, because our costumes represent that region. And if we don't wear the costumes, then we're not representing that region well. And so that was my takeaway that costuming is important because it tells about that particular area in that country and and so they they want to make sure they represent that region well and so therefore everything has to be presented to the T so so that's what I wanted to add to what uh, Sammy was was sharing and what the group shared with me. Mm. Yeah, just to add, just to add on Francis, one more thing: the the costume is the one thing that uh, brings the spirit to the dancer. It motivates him to dance. In what way? It depends on the region. If you wear socks, it means that you have to uh, dance with high feet, lots of jumps. 
Well, thank you very much for sharing and uh, hope you enjoy your last few hours, I believe, here. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, yeah. Yes. Uh, we're taping this on um, April 25th. They'll be leaving on the 26th and uh, wish you safe passage home. Thanks. Thank you very much, Kathy. We really appreciate this interview. We'll be back with more after this break. In Northern Marianas Humanities Council, Bula Guinahanya Puri Historian Marianas Zan Kutura. Sinyon Soda SCCN and Futmashon Gis on Mommy website, nmhcouncil.org. Pat Besita Gi YouTube, Pat Facebook. Guaja Lokwe Diferentes Class in Le Blue Senior on Farm. In Northern Marianas Humanities Council, Azuzura Todu E Experiencia Tautau. Welcome back to your Humanities Half Hour. We are continuing now with two other members of Sophia 6. If you could introduce yourselves and maybe tell us how long you've been a part of this ensemble. Um, maybe I'll go first. Sure. My name is Joanna, and I have been in our ensemble for five years now. I have danced a, a little bit different dances before that. But the Bulgarian dances are uh, closely connected to our culture, to our ancestors, and to our history, which I believe is very important for every person, and particu particularly for me. Yeah. So that is something that kept me going, you know, just keeping that the tradition alive, keeping the culture, and spreading it so other people can have uh, just like a little part of what I'm feeling, I can transfer it to them, to the emotion. Well, I know you've had lots of opportunities to do that. You guys have been very busy since you got here a few days ago. Um, Ivan, how about you? Uh, well, about me, it starts like 15 years ago, but I'm part of this group uh, for three years now. And it was just right before the COVID situation in our country as well, which was uh, worldwide spread it, unfortunately. And, uh, well, I would say that uh, the dances and being part of the group really made, made me go through this situation a lot easier uh, because we didn't lose contact with the society and we kept the the feeling of friendship and uh, to know that you can be close to others and to really feel like uh, that we can go through this uh, together and we'll, everything will be fine at the end. What is it you like about doing this kind of folklore dance? Uh, well, what I mostly like is that in the end of the day when we go in the uh, in the room where we practice we just leave all of our problems and all, everything that bothers you just outside of it and you and you just dance and uh, you really know that uh, that there are some things that are more important and that uh, will make you do the do it mm. and just uh, to be okay yeah just leave everything outside of the every problem apart to be a part of I think a lot of people can relate to that there's that one thing they love to do maybe it's a sport that when you're doing it you kind of forget everything else which is usually a good thing but sometimes can be a bad thing <laughs> <laughs> but um what um, what is it for for many of us? You guys are probably the first Bulgarians we have ever met. What is it you want us to know about your country and especially your culture and you as a people? Well, at first, uh, uh, we are really we really like welcoming people to our country and. Uh, when we have to guest in our home, it's like uh, that he or she is uh, feel comfortable, is above everything, and uh, uh, so this is like part of the um, of the traditions. And 
about uh, the dances and about uh, the costumes as well that we have it is always that uh, we represent uh, our daily life in these things and what we usually what we usually do how we uh, make our living as well or uh, some uh, specific uh, let's say objects or animals are usually encrypted in our costumes as well and uh, the colors that we use they usually represent like uh, different things maybe uh, if you're close to the to the lens where we uh, where the green fruit uh, green uh, cultures are grown up then you can see a lot of yellow colors mm -hmm. for example or if it, the region is from the mountains you can see a lot of green uh, oh, okay that yeah. makes sense so your um, costumes or are, are they very similar to how they were made like 50 years ago a hundred years ago or have they changed with modern times I think that um, at least uh, our ensemble, Sophia 6, we try to keep it as traditional as possible uh, because, like I said, it's important to keep the culture and the traditions alive. And in order to do that, we need to uh, stick to the original as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, the costumes that we wear, they're maybe the material is sometimes different from the ones from the one that was used before but just like uh, in a visual way they they tend to be the same mm -hmm. like they used to wear them uh, years ago because the costume uh, represents something that that people the way that we lived for example some of the costumes are uh, are made in such a way that it will be easier for the people that work on the field to wear them because for in the regions that people um, uh, harvest the crops and the other costumes could be for example lighter because it's in a region that is hotter for example more warm and this is something that is uh, presented by the costume that we wear it's very um, interesting. So what I understand then is that the, the costume really tells you uh, and the dance itself really tells you a lot about whatever region you are dancing exactly. to represent. Very interesting. Um, what um, would you say is, are one or two words that you would dis use to describe uh, Bulgarian people? as a people or as a culture this may be something that's important to your culture or important to your people well if we think about it maybe very welcoming uh, like if I'm said we like to have guests we uh, like to be a part of something to communicate we are very communicative mm. Mm. What else? People are very kind. They uh, tend to help each other. Like, for example, when we're traveling on the road and someone uh, has a problem with the car, there is always someone that will stop to ask you, even mm, without you asking them. They will stop and ask, is everything okay? Do you need some help with something? Mm -hmm. So maybe if Ivan has some thoughts about it? Yeah, maybe what I can add here is that uh, they are really hardworking and especially people that uh, work on the fields. Uh, they really are connected to the ground and they are not only making a living out of it, but uh, they, re uh, yeah, they really feel the connection with the ground and uh, and the nature. Yeah, and the nature as a whole as well. Yeah. You know what's so weird? 
It's kind of like you're describing in a way how I feel about the people here. Did you find any like sense of like similarity? Okay, you're both nodding your head. Yeah. How definitely, was that? Definitely. It's it's exciting. It's fascinating. It's just maybe amazing. Uh, the community here, the people. Um, back in Bulgaria, um, I kind of see it like we have small villages and people there, they're um, more, uh, well, um, more smiling. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I was a kid, we used to drive through the villages, we used to stop and just ask some people for the direction or for some information and everyone would always smile and everyone would uh, always help you out. Uh -huh. And it is a lot like that here in Saipan. Uh, everyone is nodding on the street, they're waving to each other, everyone knows each other or at least I, I see that, yeah, I yeah. feel that way. Yeah. And it's truly amazing. It, it gives a, a sense of, of a community, of purpose, and it's, it's fascinating. I wish that. I wish that people around the world, in a more global way, would feel that way for each other. Not only on the islands or in some villages. Well, it's nice to know we have kindred spirits in Bulgaria, at least. <laughs> So I wanted to ask you, um, as visitors from Europe, who we don't get many of, um, what, do you, what do you find visiting our island that is uh, really good? And do you have any suggestions on something we could think about that would have made your trip either more enjoyable or more convenient from a visitor's perspective? Uh, well, what I think is that... Uh it maybe it really depends on the visitors but now that uh, everyone can travel almost all around the world uh, it is exactly the traditions and um, the simple way of life that uh, should be preserved and shown to the to the guests of the island uh, because this is something different this is something that for example for us as Europeans we don't see when we go to for example Germany or Italy uh, so what makes you special is exactly who you are and uh, I think that uh, this is what you need to show the rest of the world uh, and that this will be really interesting to most of other people mm. like most like Ivan said uh, what you're already doing here is what I believe people need to see and to hear. Uh, you're already opening up to the world. You're showing yourselves. You're connecting with people from all around the world, which I believe that in these days is very important. The festival here is a step forward in this direction. Thank you for coming, and I know you've put a lot of smiles on a lot of people's faces uh, with your performances over the last few days. So thank you so much also for coming. We're really great to hear that. Thank you. I believe that that is the, the main thought, the main idea of music and dancing. It's to share, to share emotion, to share the feeling. And even uh, if we made some of the people smile, and that's a li uh, like a small accomplishment. For us. I think you've made a lot of people <laughs> smile. <laughs> Big accomplishment, I guess. <laughs> Well, our guests today have been Joanna Ivan Samuel of Sophia Six, an award-winning uh, folklore dance troupe from Bulgaria, and also Francis Ablan of Chamelanian Cultural Village, Inc., sharing cultures today and finding out we maybe have more in common than we thought around the world. This has been Your Humanities Half Hour. I'm Catherine Perry.
This program was supported by a We the People grant awarded to the Northern Marianas Humanities Council from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Any views, findings, conclusions, or recommendations expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily represent those of the National Endowment for the Humanities or the Northern Marianas Humanities Council. Thank you.